What's going on guys? My name is Suboptimal and today we'll go over everything you need to know about dat.gui. Dat.gui is a lightweight library that makes it easy to change variables in JavaScript. It is a library that is especially useful when working with 3JS. Most of the 3JS examples have a dat.gui, which is going to allow you to customize specific aspects of that scene. So here I'm customizing the height of the cylinder or the radius bottom or the radius top. Dat.gui is probably one of the most important things that you can put into your 3JS projects because it allows you to tune parameters really quickly and make adjustments whenever you have to. That's why when you go to the 3JS examples website, you're going to notice that a lot of these examples have some version of dat.gui on the top right side where you can you know play around with the animations so now that you guys have an idea of what dat.gui is and how it's helpful let's dive into how you can add it into a 3js project just as a quick heads up, the template code for this video and all future tutorials that I make about 3JS are going to be based on this setup guide. If you're sort of confused as to where I'm getting this code from, just check out the video and you'll be good to go. Once you set up your 3JS scene, you have to add a box geometry to it. So here we're going to create a box geometry of size 24 and we're going to set the material to be of color red and we're also going to add it to the scene. So this is the base scene that we're going to use to start working with the project. And if you refresh the page, you're going to see a red cube in the center of the screen that looks something like this. So in order to install dat.gui into our 3JS project, we can run npm install dat.gui. So once you npm install, you're going to want to import it into our app.jsx file and also initialize it, which we can do by running this command. And if we save the file, refresh the screen, you're going to notice that almost nothing has changed except on the top right, you should see this thing called close slash open controls. So it should be default closed and then you can click it. It'll say open controls. This is where our dat.gui is going to exist. And so if you got this on the top right, you know that you've installed and initialized it correctly. So now that we've initialized our scene, let's start by adding some things that we can customize into our GUI. So the first thing that we're going to add is the ability to customize the rotation for our box mesh. So what you can do is say GUI.add and what this add takes in is an object and the prop name as a string as well as some other parameters including the minimum and maximum number. So for example, the object that we're passing in is the box mesh rotation object and the parameter that we want this GUI to control is the X value and it's going to be between uh, zero and math.pi. So, you know, when you rotate something, you want to pass it in in radians and the name of this is going to be rotate X. So we're basically going to do the same thing for the Y and Z axis. And we're also going to add the ability to scale our box mesh on the X, Y and Z axis. So once I save that, let's see what we get. So now you can see in our example that we can rotate based on the X axis. We can rotate up to about 3.4. We can rotate on the Y axis, Z axis, and we can also scale the uh, cube on the X axis or the Y axis or the Z axis. We can also control the material on the box. So what we're going to do here is first add a toggle. So dat.gui is smart enough to know when you're passing in a boolean. So here what I'm passing in is the box mesh material and the wireframe attribute on the material. And we know that this is a true or false value and dat.gui is also sort of like smart enough to figure that out. So it's going to pass in a toggle here automatically. The next thing we're going to do is also allow us to change the color of the box, add colors, and it takes in an object as well as the value that we want to change on that object. So here, what I'm going to do is create a temporary object, which is going to contain the box mesh color. And we're going to get this value from the box mesh that we've initialized earlier. And once this value gets changed, you can have an on change function, which gets the result. And what we can do is change the box mesh color based on the value that it just changed into. So if we save both of these, and if we refresh our page, you can see here that we've got two more options on our page. We've got the wireframe, which we can toggle on and off and we can change the color of this box. So as we are changing it, you'll notice that the 
color of the box is also changing. So you might have realized that if we kept adding more variables to our dat.gui, this thing would get really long and sort of go to the end of the screen. Fortunately, what you can do is add subfolders. So here, what we're going to do is create a mesh geometry folder. And inside of it, we're going to create the rotation folder, which is going to contain the rotate variables. We're going to create the scale folder. And we also have the material folder. So let's see how that's accomplished. Now, fortunately, this is pretty straightforward. Instead of just adding it to the GUI, which we did before, what you're going to do is first create a folder in the GUI. And here I'm creating a geometry folder. And for this geometry folder, you can see that I'm adding subfolders. I'm adding the rotation folder and I'm adding a scale folder. Inside of the rotation folder, I'm adding the rotation options. Inside of the scale folder, I'm adding the scale options. And I'm basically doing the same thing for the mesh material. But here, we're not going to have subfolders because the mesh material doesn't have too many parameters. It only has a wireframe and the coloring options. What we can say is create the mesh material folder and add the wireframe and coloring to that specific folder. Once that's said and done, we get something that looks like this. And this is a lot cleaner because if you add more and more parameters, you can sort of scale it however you want and it's not going to get super long. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have an understanding of what dat.gui is, how it is useful when you're creating a 3GS project, and also how you can add specific parameters to change and also put them in subfolders so that you can keep it clean and not have this super long thing on the right side over here. Now, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing for more suboptimal content about 3JS and coding for the metaverse. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.